In this video, I'm gonna show you how to bring multiple cameras directly into ProPresenter and live stream right from within ProPresenter. Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. If you've been around church technology for any amount of time, you've probably heard of ProPresenter and may even be using it every Sunday to display lyrics on your screens. ProPresenter is worship presentation software but over the years, it's grown to include some really cool features. And interestingly enough, the way it's evolved, it's beginning to look more and more like a video switcher with graphics built in. One hurdle for people setting up a live stream in churches is getting lyrics or any lower thirds graphics overlaid over their video. Usually this entails bringing a feed from your projection software into your video system and keying that over your video. But what if your projection software was your video system? That's kind of what's happening with ProPresenter. So let's take a look at how it works. For this video, I'm gonna be using these Honey Optics PTZ cameras. If you haven't heard about Honey Optics, it's worth checking them out. These cameras are 4K capable with HDMI and SDI outputs, but also come with NDI included in their base price. And that's for about the same price as competing HD cameras that require an additional license for NDI. I've been using them here at our church during the pandemic when our volunteer levels were down. Also, Honey Optics is offering a $125 discount on their cameras to viewers here on my channel. You'll find a link to that down in the description of this video. Now, I do need to have full disclosure here. I do have a relationship with Honey Optics in that they are paying me to make training videos about their cameras on their YouTube channel. So take that as you want. I still think in the price range that these cameras are in, it's worth looking at. And if you are using PTZ cameras, go check out the Honey Optics YouTube channel. There's gonna be a lot to learn over there. The reason I wanna use these cameras for this video though, is because the integration of NDI into ProPresenter is just so easy. First, I'm gonna show you how to configure NDI on the camera. Then we'll move on to ProPresenter. You need to do some initial setup on the camera to give it an IP address on your network. So for this to work, your cameras and your ProPresenter computer need to be on the same network. To configure the camera, you can enter the camera's IP address into a browser and log in with the username and password admin and admin. And here we'll have some configuration options and basic controls for the camera. First, under the NDI config menu, the NDI local device name is the name that will show up to identify this camera on the network. So we wanna be sure to give each camera a unique and identifiable name. I've called this camera left PTZ1, and my second camera is called center PTZ2. Once you change these settings, you're gonna to wanna to click the submit button and we'll reboot in just a second when we're finished with all of our changes. Now go to the video page. Something to be aware of about these cameras is that the NDI output is actually NDI HX. What that means is the NDI signal that is sent out on the network is compressed, which actually makes it much more manageable to use multiple cameras on a regular gigabit network. So the settings here for first stream do affect our NDI video. The settings we're going to want to pay attention to are the resolution and frame rate. I'm going to select 1920 by 1080 and a frame rate of 30. And then the bit rate. The bit rate is really what's going to determine the quality of your video image. So assuming you are connected through a decent gigabit switch and your computer is decently specced, I'm going to max this out at 20,480 or that's roughly 20.5 megabits per camera feed. I'll click submit and now we need to reboot the camera for our settings to take effect. That's it for our cameras. Now we're ready to launch ProPresenter. And first I'm gonna show you how to bring the cameras in, and then I'll show you some usability things you can set up in ProPresenter to make the operation of your video more manageable. And then finally, I'll show you how to launch your live stream right from ProPresenter. Once ProPresenter is open, the first thing we need to do is go into the ProPresenter menu and click Preferences. And then in the Preferences dialog, we're gonna to go to the input page. I'm gonna click the plus button to add a video input. And then on the right here, I'll name my camera left PTZ1. 
And then in the pull-down, I can find the camera on my network, left PTZ1. That's the name I configured in the NDI configuration of the camera. Now I'll click the plus button again and add my second camera, center PTZ2. Now, I'm gonna gloss over audio for this video, but you would bring audio into ProPresenter here by adding an audio device. And you could select a physical audio device that may be bringing in a feed from your mixer, or you could use something like Dante Virtual Sound Card to bring audio in from a DAW or something like that. Now I'm ready to close the preferences and do some configuration to make this work. First, I need to create an output for my live stream that is different from my main projection feed that is going to my screens in-house. So go to the Screens menu and select Configure Screens. This main projection screen that's already configured is an actual physical display output from my computer that I'm sending to my projectors. Next to Audience, I'm gonna click the plus button and select a new video placeholder and select 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna rename this Live Video. Close that and under the Screens menu, I'm now going to go to Edit Looks. Here you determine what content goes to what output or screen as they call it. The screens you have configured are listed across the top, and we're going to uncheck Video Input for our main projection screens. We only want our video going to our live video output. And I'm going to uncheck Media for our live video output because I don't want the backgrounds that I use on my main projection output for my in-house feed to cover my video on my live video feed. So let's close that and see what we have. Down here in the media bin, on the bottom left, you'll see video input. Click that to expand the video input area, and we're gonna click the plus button and add our two cameras. Now in the preview window, this pull down lets us select between seeing our different outputs. So we'll select live video, and we can see our selected camera. And by clicking between my two inputs, I switch what camera is going to my live video output. And when I add lyrics, they are overlaid over my video. And you can see back on my main projection output, it's being displayed with the background. We control how the lyrics are formatted distinctly between our two outputs by using themes. In the theme editor, I've created two themes, one called Simple Lyric Centered, it's just a text box that has the potential to fill the whole screen, and I've defined the font and font size. And the other, Simple Lyrics Lower Thirds, I've sized the text box to be at the bottom of the screen and also reduced the size of the font a little. So now I'll go back to Show and back to the Edit Looks menu. And by the Presentation option, I can select my two different looks. For my main projection, I'll select Simple Lyrics Centered, and for my live video, Simple Lyrics Lower Thirds. Now if I show you my two outputs, you can see how the same lyrics are coming in, but they are being formatted differently based on the theme that was applied in the Edit Looks dialog. Okay, one more thing before we get to the actual live streaming of our video that's gonna make this a lot easier to run for your operator. Right now, to see what's going on, I've got to flip back and forth between my outputs here. And more importantly, I can't see what my other camera that's not live is doing. So in my case with these PTZ cameras, I can't frame up my next shot before I take it live. So let's fix that. Back under Configure Screens, in ProPresenter, the stage screens work a bit differently than audience screens. And the main difference for us right now is that we can load a bunch of different things into it to be shown in one display by creating a layout. That should make more sense in a second. So first, I'm gonna create a new stage screen by clicking the plus button and selecting a new placeholder that is 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna right click on it and rename it to Preview Monitor. Now I can close that, and in the preview, I can select the preview monitor screen. And it's currently got the default stage display layout. Now what we need to do is go to screens and select edit layouts. This is our current default stage display layout that is being used. I'm gonna click the plus button and create a new blank layout. Right click on it and rename it to preview monitor layout. 
So now with the big plus button up here, I can add things into my layout. First, I'll add a screen preview and select live video. I'm gonna resize this to fill the top right quarter of the screen. And in the properties for this item over here on the right, I'm gonna add a stroke, which will just add an outline around it. Now right click on it and select duplicate. And in the properties, instead of live video, I'm gonna select main projection. Now let's duplicate this. Move it down. And for this one, I'm gonna select video input. And then select camera one. Duplicate it again. and select camera two. If you wanna get fancy, you can even add some labels. Click the big plus button and select text. And now I'm gonna move this above the main projection box. Select a font and size, and we'll make it pretty small. And I'm also going to go to the shape tab and click fill so it has its own background. Duplicate this and change the text to live video. And then again for camera one. And finally, again, for camera two. So now if we go back to show, our preview monitor is still showing the default layout. So we need to go to the screens menu again, and under preview monitor, select our preview monitor layout that we created. And there we have it. In one view, we can see our main projection feed, our live video feed, and our two camera inputs. And obviously, you can fill this layout with whatever additional things would be helpful for your operators. So now let's actually live stream our video. We've got our live video output that has our camera feeds being switched to it and our lyrics overlaid on it. So that's the output we want to send to our live stream. Click the Live button on the top right here and select Capture Settings. In the source, we'll select the output that we want to send to our stream. So in our case, that's going to be live video. In the destination, you have three options, disk, RTMP, and resi. Disk will record your video on the hard drive. RTMP can be used to send your video directly to any live streaming host that will take RTMP, like Facebook, YouTube, or Vimeo. And Resi is a paid live streaming service that is becoming more and more popular with churches because, in my opinion, it's just about the most reliable service you can get. But it comes at a premium cost. So for this example, we're going to live stream to Facebook. So let's select RTMP. And now we will copy and paste in the server and stream key from Facebook. For Facebook, I'm gonna select 720p30 for my encoding. Then when I click Start Capture, my video will be sent out to Facebook. So that's it. I've now got my live stream on Facebook, bringing in these Honey Optics PTZ cameras right into ProPresenter and controlling the whole thing right from within the same presentation software that you're probably already using for your lyrics on screen. Be sure and go and check out these Honey Optics cameras. Again, follow the link in the description for that discounted price. And if you found this video useful, could I ask a favor of you? I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. That not only helps me here on YouTube, but also helps other people find this video. 
And if you'd like to see more pro presenter content, let me know about that down in the comments. I kind of glossed over audio, so maybe that's the next video I should make about ProPresenter. If you'd like to see that, be sure to let me know. Until next time, bye.